Joshua chapter number 6. We're just going to read the first five verses. <clears throat> Bible says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And you shall compass the city, all you men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And the seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with their great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall send up every man straight before him. Our gracious heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we thank you for the reading of your word. Just thank you again for the opportunity to be here, Lord. As you just help me now, Lord, as you just help uh, calm my nerves, just help with what you've laid upon my heart, just help me give it to your people here this evening uh, the same way you gave it to me, Lord, that it can be a help and an encouragement to each and every one of us. Lord, is, uh, I know the, the instruction from the message, Lord, but I know it can still be a help to us, Lord. As you just help, uh, Lord, just help uh, hide me behind the cross, help me not say anything, be contrary to your word, as you just meet with us now the rest of this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I'm going to look at by way of introduction, just think of the powerful of how powerful that city was when it talks about Jericho. Um, you can look up a lot of things, and most of everything I could find, you're talking about a city uh, that was enclosed with a wall that was around 15 feet tall and anywhere from five to six feet thick uh, that it talked about. It even talked about the tower of it being over 20 feet tall. Uh, so think of how powerful and how uh, majestic this city was when they came up towards it. And think of what it would mean for God's people. Uh, you think about them uh, out, just God's people out uh, uh, traveling, so to speak, and uh, what it's going to mean to the rest of the world, uh, the rest of those people there, if they go in and overthrow that city. Any of these other little small cities got to be thinking, what's in store for us? They overthrew the great Jericho. Uh, they overthrow the great uh, city and, and able to conquer it uh, um, so quickly and so easily, so to speak. So we see the powerful, uh, how just big and powerful that city was, uh, um, so to speak. But we see the promise that the Lord gives in verse number 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho. He's already told him, it's already taken care of. You just got to follow the simple instructions that I give you, cooperate with me, which we'll get to that here in just a little bit, and I've already given you the city. How many victories has he already given us in our life if we would just be willing to take hold of them? Too many times we want to sit back and look at something and think, that's too big for me to handle. Uh, that, that's too great for me to be able to accomplish. That's, uh, that's just, there's no way I can get there. And, and we stay back and we fail to claim the victories that God has already given us at times in our lives. As Pastor talked about, I believe it was even just this past week, talked about too many times we just, we serve in our own minds too small a God. That we just, we limit God with what we think he can do and what he can even accomplish through us, so to speak. So we see the promise that was given. We see the path then that they had to take. And he tells them in verse number three, and you shall compass the city, all you men of war, go round about the city once, and thus do it six days. And he again tells him then in verse number four, and the seventh day you're to compass the city seven times. So they had a path of exactly what they were supposed to do. A lot of times God gives us a path, but are we willing to follow it? If, if pastor is here, if God had told me this is what we need to do tonight, we're going to have to walk outside and walk around the building one time or walk around it six times or whatever it may be, how many of us are willing to follow that path Amen. of whatever it takes? Amen. And see, we'll get to the message here in a little bit, but that's a lot of times that's our problem. We're not willing to cooperate with what God wants us to do. Because that just seems, that just seems foolish. That seems crazy. We're gonna, how, how are we going to defeat this great city by walking circles around it? I mean, really, we're, we're supposed to walk around this city and then on the seventh day walk around it seven times and this is really supposed to happen. Uh, we, we, if we're honest with ourselves, wouldn't we question how silly that sounded, Brother Phil? You're crazy. <laughs> Have you seen these walls? They're not just going to fall down. This is going to take something more dramatic, but we see the path that they were taking. But I want, me to, I want us to look at the last thing. Skip down to verse 20 and 21. Look at the partaking because there's somebody more powerful than that city was. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets, and it came to pass that when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, 
So the people went up, at, it went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and oxen and sheep and ass, with the edge of the sword. They did exactly what God had told them to do. And now, because our God's more powerful than any city is going to be, they walked straight up into wherever they was at and overthrew the city and took the city. Amen. But that all happened because of one thing, Brother Phil. They was willing to follow what God had told them to do. Yeah. Amen. They cooperated, so to speak, with what Joshua had told them. Joshua told him, said, this is what we got to do. This is what God has told me. He's told me we're going to compass the city one time for six days, and on the seventh day we're going to compass it seven times, and we're going to blow these trumpets, and then the, the walls are going to fall flat, and the city's been given into our hands. And that's what I want to preach on tonight, cooperation. Are we willing to cooperate with what God would have us to do? See, there's a lot of things at times that we will cooperate uh, so to speak, without even realizing what we're doing. Hopefully, I, I, maybe you got off work in time, you did. We, we, we actually even had this discussion uh, uh, tonight with my father-in-law. Bella had called and asked him uh, if he wanted to come to church tonight and a couple things, and they got talking about, if you've seen this house over in Triple Crown that had burnt yesterday. And he got talking about that, and he got talking about the news. We said, well, we never watch the news. We hardly ever watch the news. Uh, just to have no use for it, don't turn it on. But too many times what we will do is we will turn on the news. We've had a wonderful day at work, even though we had to work. We had a wonderful day, maybe just in the Lord or whatever. And you go home and you sit down, you turn on the news. And whatever station you watch, I don't whatever you may like, they're, they're dogging Trump or they're, they're pumping Trump up or, or they're doing this and doing that. And it immediately puts us in a bad mood. You've cooperated with just everything that the world wanted you to do. Why else, uh, th this, just, this is just me thinking out loud, why else would they put all that kind of stuff on there, Miss Mary, if they didn't want us in a bad mood all the time? Sure. There's plenty of good stories they could report on. There's plenty of good stuff they could report on, but they choose not to. They put the same stuff on the TV over and over and over again that gets people mad and upset and all riled up, and we, we come to church all mad, we, come, we go here all mad, we do this all mad because this is going on or that's going on. Uh, they, Speedway raises their gas prices for 50 cents for no reason whatsoever, and that gets us all fired up. We've cooperated with everything they wanted us to do to put ourselves in a bad mood. Have we not? Do we cooperate more with the world or do we cooperate more with the things of God? Now, I just got a few things tonight, and we'll go home. First thing, do you cooperate more with spreading gossip or spreading the gospel? In 2 Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse number 20, the Bible says, For I fear, lest when I come I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as would not lest there be debates, envyings, wrath, strife, backbitings, whispering, swellings, and tumults. How quick are we always to spread gossip, but not near as quick to spread the gospel? How quick are we if somebody tells us something? Hey, I seen, uh, and I know our pastor talks about not walking down the beer aisle. I don't have that same conviction. If I can get from one spot to the next and Kroger faster, I'll go down whatever aisle happens to be there. I'll be honest, I'm lazy. It don't bother me. I don't look at it, don't bother me. But how many times are we so, are, are you believing? I've seen, I seen Brother Rod, he, he's walking down Kroger, he's walking right past all that Budweiser, and, he, and I seen him, I seen him in that, I, I just thought he was going to get something, and I moved out there before he had a chance to see me. Well, I seen, I, I seen, and she's not even here to defend herself, I can't pick on this, I seen Sister Lisa Turner, she was, she was in that bar, I seen her in the parking lot pulling out, not knowing that she just had to turn around and go home because her furnace is broke, and she wants to go home and get it fixed to get warm. But how quick are we always to spread that kind of gossip around? Something that we hear. We don't know. We just hear. We hear something. That I, I'm not saying this is true. I didn't see it, but I heard. Isn't that what a whole lot of this whole thing with, with Trump has? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't listen to the phone call, but this is what this person, I thought they said that their mom's, daughter's, friend's, cousin, third removed, this is what they said was on the phone call. We laugh about that, and we think that's foolish that they would treat our president that way, and that's the same way we treat others. Right. Well, I didn't see this, but this is what I heard. This is what I thought. How come we're so quick to spread that, but we're not as quick to spread the gospel? 
How come we'll go to work tomorrow and, and we'll talk about all kinds of things and we won't talk about what happened at church on a Wednesday night? We won't spread the gospel about what happened to church on Sunday. We have no problem. Look, I've I seen there was uh, quite a few people I've seen at work this morning and the first thing they want to talk about was the fight at the Kansas-Kansas State game. The first thing we'll want to talk about uh, well, the, when the Super Bowl's over, how many of us will go to work on Monday and everybody wants to talk about the Super Bowl or the Super Bowl commercials? And we'll, and we'll, we'll cooperate right with every bit of that how can we like before you tell me and before we talk about the super bowl let me tell you what happened at church yesterday yeah. let me tell you what god did at church yesterday Amen. which one are we going to cooperate more with oh brother josh we just can't do that they won't like me anymore well find better friends i don't know I have found that even people who have nothing to do with church, people that will talk about every other word out of their mouth will be a cuss word and they can drink and all that, you just talk about it a little bit, all of a sudden they'll start asking questions every now and then. They'll talk about it. They'll start saying certain things if you're willing to talk about it. What do we cooperate more with, spreading gossip or spreading the gospel? The second thing, what do we cooperate more when it comes to the world? That we see people with their success and failure? In Acts chapter number 9, and if you don't know what happened in Acts chapter number 9, if you don't know exactly where we're at, we're talking about uh, Saul on the road to Damascus. And in verse 13 and 14, I got ice. That wasn't supposed to happen. In Acts chapter number 9, and verses 13 and 14, it says, Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem, and here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on, on thy name. So God, is, he, he's shown that light before Saul, and he's told him where to go, and now he's going to Ananias and, sending, and telling him this is what's going to happen. And Ananias is saying, No, wait a minute, I know who that person is. Do we cooperate with the world when that's how we are? We almost see the success in reveling in other people's failures. Right. No, no, I know what that person is. I don't believe, Brother, Brother Greg, we even talk about when he comes, talking about people we see him back home and grew up with, and they still tell him, he said, I can't believe you grew up and you're a preacher. Is that what we look at people? I can't. Look, I, I, that person, this is, this is all they've ever been. This is all they've ever done. And we almost, look, we almost revel in the success at their failure. Rather then cooperating with the things of God and seeing success and forgiveness. If you was to read on in Acts chapter number 9 and verses 15 and 16, and the, God, and, and the Bible says, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, and bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. He's saying, Yeah, I understand he's done all these things, but I've forgiven him. And I'm going to use him, and this is what he's going to do, and you just need to listen to what I instruct you to do, and allow things to happen. And see, it's not our place to judge people. It's not our place to look down on people when they've been through certain things or whatever. But I'm afraid too many times that's how we treat others. We almost have success in their failure to be able to look at them and say, see, I knew you couldn't do it. I told you you couldn't. I knew that's what was going to happen to you. I knew you were still going to fail. I knew you was going to have this, or I knew you was going to have that, or whatever it may be. We have success in failure rather than having a success in forgiveness. Why are we so quick to mess up and go to God and ask God, God, forgive me for what I've done, but we're not quick to give that forgiveness to someone else. We're not so quick to get, well, you don't know how many times they've hurt me. Well, how many times have we hurt God? If you literally could, how many times have we put those nails back in his hands and those types of things with the things that we have done? Even this very day, the things that we have done. So why then do we find it so hard to forgive others? Why then do we find it so hard to just be able to tell somebody, even just if it's just for our own good, even if you don't go tell them, I don't believe you should, but even if you don't, just in your own heart, to get past those things. We have, see, because we'll get to all that in a minute. We'll get to that at the end. The third thing, do you cooperate more with the world or do you cooperate more with the things of God? When you cooperate more with the world, you're starved for attention. In Luke chapter number 18, and verses 11 and 12, it says, and The Pharisees stood and prayed thus to themselves, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice a week, give tithes of all that I possess, and we could read on and on. He's sitting there looking for attention. Here's what I have done. Let me tell you what I have done. I, I, I used to work with a person, that, and, and it worked for him. They, got, hey, they quit, then they left Brother Clint, and they came back, and they gave him promotion, and, and then all these things, but all they ever did. Let me tell you what I have done. 
and they would go, this is what I did today. And all the time you had all the people standing back that was doing all the work, looking at him, just shaking their head, thinking, they have no idea. But see, that's how we are too many times. We're those people when we cooperate more with the world, we're just starved for attention. We want people look at me. Look what I have done. Look what I have accomplished. Look at, look, this is what I have done. What, who was it that said... Uh, brother uh, uh, Clint got up there to sing and said, I appreciate all the things that, that those that do around the church, and so many of them, you have no idea. Why? Because when you cooperate more with the things of God, you starve more for anonymity. In Luke chapter 18, in the very next verse, in verse 13, And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. He didn't want to be seen. He didn't want everybody to know what he does. How many times we just come in, especially when it comes springtime, when it, the, the weather gets warm and it gets nice, and we just we, we love coming in, and, and most of us don't give a second thought to the fact that we come in and the yard looks nice, and we got nice pretty flowers out front, and everything's just, man, it just the landscaping always looks so good, and the yard always looks so good. The yard wouldn't look good without Brother Ray being on Brother Randy's tail all the time about doing things right. You know, those things don't just happen. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Those things don't just happen. But you never hear Brother Randy and Brother Ray coming in. They, you, I have never come and shook their hand and say, boy, don't that yard look good today? We did a good job this week, didn't we? Well, we cut it twice so it looked good. Y'all think it's silly, but sometimes they do. They cut it twice just so it looks better. See, you don't see that. They're not starving for attention. I'm not going to embarrass her, but most of you probably have no idea who does most of the mulching and plants all the flowers and all those kinds of things. Because they're not in it for the attention. They just want to be able to do something for God. Amen. And see, when we want to cooperate with the things for God, we just want to do things just, you know, we start off that anonymity. Don't, don't put me out there. Just let me do my thing and get this taken care of, and it'll all be okay. That's why it is such wonderful to be in our church, that we have people that just want to do something. That chair rail out there, that didn't get put up by, by itself. I'm sure we all know who. There's only one person in the church probably that could do it. We all know who did it, but it still didn't get put up by himself. I know he don't want to be known, but how many of you said, boy, Brother Ray, that looks good, thanks. I didn't. I told him how, everything that he should have done. I told him he should have put it down the hallways. Only did that to, be, to, to pick on him because he asked me about what I thought about it. But see, we got so many people that just starve for attention. Look at me. Look what I did. Look what I did. That's how we cooperate with the world. The world wants want the attention. They want to stand up and say, look at me, look at me, look at me. That's the day and age we live in now. If I had my phone in my pocket, that, I'd prove it. How many pages and things could we pull up with social media? We've got to take our selfies. We all want ourselves out there because we're obsessed with being seen. We want to have so many followers and so many of this because we're obsessed with being seen. Instead of cooperating with God, we starve for anonymity. Anonymity. That's a hard word to say. I said that the second time, and I felt like I was in Finding Nemo. Anonymity, anonymity whatever that was, right, that Nemo lived in. The last thing, when we cooperate with the world, we suppress God out. In Mark chapter number 5, I don't know why, but the last few weeks over to jail, I, uh, this story has come up in my mind, whether I read it or whether I thought about it, and I've, I've not preached on it at all, but it's just it's more and more thought about it, and if you don't know what it is, uh, th that madman that is in the tombs, if you don't know where it is in Mark chapter number 5, that, it's talking about that madman in the tombs. And he lives where he lives. And, and, and you see all the people, and this is just my way of thinking. But in Mark chapter number 5 and verse number 4, it says, Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Now, I would think, because it talks about he would hurt himself. I would think, me reading that, my small and infinite mind, whatever, the people wanted to help him. They was trying to help him. He's hurting himself. He, he's, a, he's a danger to us. He's a danger to himself. They're trying to bind him up so he quit hurting himself and all these things. So you would think now that God has showed up and God has done something for him, they would be excited. They come and it says and they come and they find that man clothed and in his right mind. You would think they'd have a party. But instead in Mark chapter number 5 and verses 15 through 17... And he says, And they came to Jesus, and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion, sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. Jesus, you, you need to leave. 
you need to get out of here. How many times when we cooperate with the world do we suppress God out? Now, we're not going to stand up and say, God, get out of here. We don't need you here. But how many times do we say, he'll calm down. He'll be all right. Brother Phil, he, one of these days, he's going to quit shouting so much. Brother James, one of these days, he's going to quit coming up here, and he's going he's to stop singing that way for God. It, he'll, he'll calm down eventually. How many times do we ever have those thoughts? I can't believe they're standing up shouting and screaming like that and carrying on. One of these days, they'll get it. One of these days, they'll calm down. We're suppressing God out. That's their way of worship. It's no different than somebody else sitting over here might be completely quiet, just tears rolling down their face. See, but we suppress God out. When what we need to be doing is suppressing the devil out. What we need to be doing is praying and telling the devil, look, you're not going to attack our services. We're not going to have this go on. This upcoming Sunday, our pastor uh, hopefully will be back, and, and Brother Sammy is supposed to be here, and God, we're going to see revival break out, and we're not going to bring the devil in with us. Sure. But too many times, we cooperate with the world. Yeah. And we'll come in, and we've got all the burdens of the world that we're going to try to bring in here instead of coming in ready to worship. I understand, especially on a Wednesday night, a lot of us have worked hard all day and you're tired and you have had the world beat you up. That's exactly what they want. Exactly what the devil wants. Because he wants you to have to come in here and instead of sitting down being ready to worship, you've come in here and it's the first time maybe you've sat down all day and you're like, whew, boy, I am so tired and wore out. I'm glad Brother Josh is preaching tonight because I know we'll be out of here early. <laughs> and we've not given a second thought to about truly coming into worship, seeing what God can do. See, we've suppressed God out. We, we have no intention on doing anything with God. How important is it for us to cooperate? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you're still in Joshua, look over at chapter number 7. Too many times, I'm afraid, we get into that mindset, I can't do a whole lot. I don't matter. I'm just one person. Nobody's going to miss me if I'm not here. Nobody's going to miss me if I don't do this or I don't do that. I'm just one simple little person, Brother Phil. How important am I in the whole grand scheme of things? On a Sunday morning, nobody's going to miss me if, if I'm the one that don't show up on Sunday. I got a little bit of a, a, a cough or sneezing or whatever. Nobody's going to care if I stay home. Well... Maybe that's not the case. Joshua chapter number 7 and verse number 1, and it says, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. Now we know, if you are here tonight and a student of the Bible, we know a certain person took of the accursed thing. And we're going to read some more. That was just Achan. Achan took of the accursed thing. One person. But it says what? The children of Israel. It says all of them. Because one person didn't cooperate with what was supposed to happen. They were all supposed to walk in, destroy everything, take the city, and be done. And one person decided, I like some of that stuff. And I'm going to take some of it with me. And not only does it mess it all up, Brother Phil, we go on and read in verse number 1, and he says, in the accursed, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Haven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said, Let, him, let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, but they are but a few. So they went up thither of the, men, of the people, about three thousand men, and they, and they fled from before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote them, about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even to Shabiram, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. One man didn't cooperate. And it cost over 30 people their lives. Yeah. See, now we look at it. No, nobody's probably going to come in here with a sword and, and kill anybody on Sunday morning if we're not cooperating where we need to be. But could somebody possibly die and go to hell that don't get saved because we're not doing what we're supposed to do? Amen. Absolutely, it can happen. See, but we choose not to think that way. All it takes is one person not cooperating 
with where we're supposed to be, and we see what can happen. That, that started off in chapter number 7. It did not say Achan committed a trespass, but the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing because of what Achan had done. One person failing to cooperate cost over 30 men their lives. 36 men, excuse me, 36 men, it tells us their lives. See, it is important for us to be cooperating. It is important for us to be wherever it is we're going to be. And see, too many times it's, uh, it's not something major. It just can be something as simple as, you know, our pastor announced, I believe it was last, uh, uh, maybe his last Wednesday night or last Sunday or a couple Sunday nights ago, and he talked about it. He, he received some uh, guidance, and he thought about what we needed to do to pursue to expand the most financial, uh, uh, the best way financially and all those things. Have you quit praying about it then? Hopefully not, because we shouldn't have. Amen. Because the best way financially still means we still got to pay for it. I don't think he stood up here and said, hey, look, I know the best way to do it now because so-and-so has, has hit the lottery and gave us a million dollars, and it's going to be easy now. See, we should still be praying for it. We should still be willing to cooperate in whatever it is that he asks us to do with one of those things. Do we cooperate more with the world, or do we cooperate more with the things of God? Too many times we get all wrapped up in the world. We get all wrapped up in things of the world that we allow it to affect our worship when we come into here. And we allow it to take away from the things of God. We allow it to keep us from cooperating with what God wants us to do. Think of the things of what could happen. And look, I, I understand. I thought about this this week, and, and I debated back and forth. And God, I, know, I, you know, I don't know brother jordan brother phil they do this or not but these things go in through my head about 50 times god showed me this message about three weeks ago and i've preached it to myself 150 times over the last few weeks and i keep coming back to this thing when i get to the end i keep thinking no I, I, that's just and that's that's not just something that we do but just think about this if you can't make it i understand especially on a wednesday night you, you're working maybe you you get 30 minutes to be able to eat dinner and that's all you get i, I get those things but we still pray 30 minutes beforehand every service with the exception of sunday nights if there's choir practice or something like that there's usually just a handful of us here what would happen if all of us had showed up at 6 30 to pray i might add a heart attack for one but truly what would have happened if we all came tonight if you was able to look i understand if you work late didn't have time i get that i'm not i'm not trying to step on any toes or anything i get that but what about those of us that could have been here that just chose not to? Because we were cooperating with the world. I'm just tired today. I need to be there at 7 o'clock. I'll be there at 7 o'clock. I don't need to be there any earlier. What if we cooperate with things of God? You know what? We pray early. I'm going to go pray for services. I'm going to pray for Brother Josh. I'm going to pray for our pastor. He might be preaching tonight down in Florida. I'm going to pray that he has safe travels home. I want to pray that God show up tonight, that maybe even revival break out tonight. Maybe even Brother Clint might get up and sing while he's singing and talking about that city. We just see revival break out and just have a time in the Lord tonight. What if we was cooperate with all the things of God instead of the things of the world? What do you cooperate with tonight? Sister Renee, you come. Brother Clint, you come. Get a song of invitation. We'll invite you to come. Who are you cooperating with tonight? Don't think that you're not important. We just talked about Aiken, one person not cooperating in the effect that it had on the rest of the children of Israel. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we thank you so much for the message, Lord. Lord, we just ask you just help us, Lord, just uh, to be willing to cooperate with what it is you'd have us to do, not only as a church, but even in our individual lives, Lord. Uh, what the will is you have for our life, Lord. Somebody here tonight that don't know what that will is, Lord, they just come, begin to seek out what your will is for their life. Lord, and ask you just be with this invitation. Speak to hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.